You know, when you're when you're built different than everybody else and you have this desire for more and this desire for achievement and this desire to win, everybody else looks at you like you're like you're fucked up. And they'll tell you that too. You know, what the is wrong with you? Like, why, why can't you just relax? Why can't you just do this? Why can't, because I'm, I'm just not built that way, man. And uh, as I've gotten a little bit older, I've gotten better at accepting it. Um, and it's sort of embracing the fact that this provides a lot of good, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that make, that you have to deal with that, that come that aren't so good. The masculine youth have the worst life. I would argue that young men today have a worse life than even young women, and they have all of their own problems. I'm not saying their problems don't exist, but for the average young man today, women expect him to be a millionaire at 20, which he isn't. Nobody gives a shit about his opinion at all. He can kill himself, nobody cares. He isn't born with any innate value because he's not beautiful like a woman is. So he has to build himself from the ground up. He has no teachers in any way. No one really to teach him. There's people like us on the internet, fine, but everyone around him is gonna convince him that we're bad people. Everything he's being told in regards to his natural feelings, his natural instincts and inclinations he's being told makes him a bad person, makes him toxic for feeling like a man in any way. It's very hard to be a young man today and they feel disenfranchised with the system. So they find solutions, the, the human mind looks for solutions, they start listening to me and they go, oh, I feel better if I do this. I feel better if I go to the gym. I feel better if I start to take responsibility and take accountability and I, I feel better if I'm not afraid of pain anymore. I feel better if I'm not afraid of suffering. I feel better if I understand that I'm supposed to suffer, that that's what's gonna make me the best person that I could possibly be. That my youth is supposed to be spent doing difficult things so that I have the light and the dark. They find me and they start to feel a certain way about it. And then they reject the matrix programming. You don't know where you are. You don't know what to do. Start moving in some direction and that'll give you some clues or some indication or some immediate feedback about where you are and you can start assembling a better picture of what's happening. But that f reframing the way you're looking at things and seeing opportunities instead of seeing punishments and instead of seeing downturns in your life, seeing opportunities, it's just gonna have such a much better impact on the way you, you know, where you get to. What are you gonna do? How bad do you want it? There's two options to continue forward, pushing upward. And if you do, that dream is given birth and forever you will live in the reality of it. If you stop, quit, throw in the towel, I promise you there's no distance you can travel far enough to find that dream again. For it is dead. And in its death, it's replaced by regret. The problems in your life are your own dang fault. And so the answer into fixing the problems in your life are in your own dang hands. The responsibility for the well-being of your family, your wife, your husband, your children are yours. Are yours. If you ever see me in a Rolls Royce, a private plane, a six or seven star hotel, living my life to the fullest, don't hate on me. Don't get jealous of me because I work my ass off to get it. Everything about my life and career I've earned and ain't nobody gave me shit. Nobody handed me nothing. If you want it, go get it. The most important decision you can make above any on the face of the earth is deciding that no matter what happens in your life, no matter what happens, you're gonna live in a beautiful state. And what the hell does that mean? It means that you're not gonna suffer. It means a beautiful state is that you're gonna be happy, and, but that's only one. Or you're gonna feel creative, or you're gonna be passionate, or you're gonna be in awe of something, or you're gonna feel love. Any state that's a beautiful state is really the core essence of who you are without fear. You better go out there and do it yourself. You know, don't fucking wait around and wait for someone to hand deliver something. Go make it happen. You know, the fish don't just jump in the boat. If you want to go catch them, go catch them. You know, throw that line in the water and go do some work. And if it doesn't work that day, do it again the next day. So sometimes when you think you're making the wrong decision or you have to making the toughest decision because you're thinking about somebody else and the consequences, if you think the price of winning is too high, wait till you get the bill from regret. And that bill from regret is generational. And there's a lot of people listening to this 
that that bill has been passed on from generation to generation and you are holding that bill right now and somebody in some one of your generations has to pay that bill off. There's, there's a saying, there's a quote that I really believe in that when the pain of the current reality becomes greater than the fear of change, that's when we change. So like when you become, the, when the pain becomes so intense that it's greater than the fear that you have of the unknown, then you'll go into the unknown. You can stand there at the door looking at this abyss, but when it becomes so painful that you walk into that, that's when the change happens. True desire in the heart, that itch that you have, whatever it is you wanna do, that thing that you wanna do to help others and to, to grow and to make money, that desire, that itch, that's God's proof to you, sent beforehand already to indicate that it's yours. And anything you want good, you can have. So claim it, work hard to get it. When you get it, reach back. Pull someone else up. Each one, teach one. So whenever it gets nasty, David Goggins goes, you had nobody anyway, mother. So see how I'm talking myself right now? That's me. That fires me the fuck up. That makes me fucking nuts. You had nobody anyway, mother. Look around you. There was no fucking team. It was you. There was no weight loss program or mom and dad waking you up saying you can do it you can be better trying to build belief you built belief when you had nothing rock bottom you did that so as times get hard for me the truth comes out and my truth is powerful as f it's real it's tangible i feel it it comes out of my brain as i speak about it i'm reliving every single dark moment of my life to be here. Every single person that I know that is incredibly successful in a balanced way mm -hmm. and has a good perspective on it, elects to do very hard things regularly. Mm. The path of least resistance never makes you happy. Mm. It's like, it does, you have to push yourself. When people talk about self-esteem, I hate this term. Like so many kids were taught to get a participation trophy for something and they thought I'm gonna build their self-esteem this way. People can tell your whole life you're a piece of crap and your brain can go, screw you, I'll show you, and you become somebody. People your whole life can tell you you're beautiful, you're perfect, you're the best, and you can still not believe them and be depressed about your life and think you're nobody. Your life self-esteem, your self-esteem, esteem for yourself is earned by you doing something difficult for you. If you could change the way you wake up in the morning, stop saying, I got to go to work, I got to work out, I got to get this weight off of me. I got to go and meet with the people at the school. I got to deal with my coworkers. Change one word in that sentence and everything about your life changes. I get to wake up in the morning. I get to go to work. I get to go and meet with these people today. When you say I got to, you take all of your opportunities and all of your blessings and you wrap them up in stress by saying, I got to. You take all the stress off of it when you say, I get to. I work hard now, so the second half of my life, I can do whatever the fuck I want. Mm -hmm. That's 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 been my mentality. It's like, I'm not going to trick off my early years for partying and then worry about struggling, how I'm going to make it, how I'm going to take care of my family, how I'm going to take care of everybody else. Like, that's not going to be me. I'm going to grind it out now. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to set up the foundation so I can enjoy myself later. That's always been my mentality and, I, and, and that just that works for me if life was nothing but green lights and we didn't have yellows and reds things that make us pause hardships crises times for introspection then what the hell would it all be for we need the yellows and the reds that's how we evolve that's how hopefully there's some ascension to our being that's how we give some credit to time and growing older if we were the same person today that we were 20 years ago, then what, what, I mean, what the hell are we doing? When they look at you, they not looking at you seeing everything you went through and what you became. When they look at you, they see everything that they're not. I'll say just honestly, just lock in, man. I think the biggest thing nowadays, everybody has social media and stuff. And like, sometimes you just got to put the phone down. Sometimes you got to figure out who you are. And I see people all the time like, how do you figure out what you want to do? And like, I got big dreams to be rich and famous or just rich but I, I just don't know what to do. I got so many things I want to do. A lot of people don't 
like remove themselves from the crowd or like they you never put down the weed or you never put down the alcohol or you you got to really remove yourself from all all this stuff and like maybe put down your phone for once just think and like just sit back and sometimes it might make you cry you might be to go into some deep depression shit but it will make it will trigger that 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 thing in your brain to think and to figure out what you really want to do nobody is perfect people are going to tell you you're perfect just the way you are you're not you are imperfect. You always will be, but there is a powerful force that designed you that way. And if you're willing to accept that, you will have grace. And grace is a gift. And like the freedom that we enjoy in this country, that grace was paid for with somebody else's blood, do not forget it. You know, if you're going to create anything of value in this life, you're going to, even if it's with other people, you're going to have to be willing to, to be on your own for a bit, to forage on your own, to take walks alone and then return to people, to your tribe, so to speak, and share with them what you've learned, or maybe even just show up with whatever energy shift has occurred while you were off. That's mental health, to be able to celebrate yourself mm. and to be able to give yourself some credit. And I feel like that was a great statement for those going through mental health, because we always depend on confirmation or we depend on someone to make us feel like we're worthy or we're validated when in actuality, you should thank yourself mm. for being validated because you don't want to got to get up every day and do this and walk this walk, talk this talk, and do what you do to be you. So thank yourself, pat yourself on the back. Survive it any way you can. Pray, cry, scream, holler, yell, crawl, collapse, faint, get up, rinse, and repeat. But the only thing I ask you to do is when life hits you in the gut, survive. When they say you won't make it, <clears throat> cry if you must, but survive. When they fire you and you don't know where you're going to get your next meal from, hold your head up, your back straight, and survive. Stress primarily comes from not taking action over something that you can have some control over. So. If I find that some particular thing is causing me to have stress, that's a, uh, a, a warning flag for me. What it means is there's something that I haven't completely identified, perhaps in my conscious mind, that is bothering me and I haven't yet taken any action on it. So stress comes from ignoring things that you shouldn't be ignoring, um, I think in large part. So, so just go and do it, try, learn from it. You, you know, you'll fail at some things. But that's a learning experience that you need so that you can take that on to the next experience. Um, and don't let people who you may respect uh, and who you believe know what they're talking about, don't let them tell you it can't be done. Because often they will tell you it can't be done. And uh, it's just because they don't have the courage to try it. You got to want it first. Then you got to work it. Then you have the opportunity to win it. But it all starts with your want. You gotta want this. I can't want this for you. You gotta want this like no other. Then the work has to happen. And see, the work and the want gotta add up together to want each other. Then that puts you in a position to win. Ain't nobody giving you no W. You gotta go take that thing, man. But I think my belief in God started again. I believed in something. There's something, something. stronger than us. Yes. When I started doing comedy, yeah. because the universe takes care of you yes. in magnificent ways. It's not just about the talent and you making people laugh. It takes care of you when you put the effort in. It takes care of you when you take care of other people. That's when you see the love of God. I think you, you have to work every single day. I think that's where your confidence comes from. Um, because when nobody's looking, that's the time that really counts. That's the time that really matters. Yo, if you don't start getting honest with yourself, you're going you're gonna to die, die a liar. Stop lying to yourself and stop volunteering those lies to others. And I think a lot of us do that, you know, a lot. Like we, we lie to ourselves and then we just volunteer those lies to other people. Like nobody even asked us, you know? And I think, I think social media, you know, uh, contributes to a lot of that because every day you feel like you have to, you know, feed this beast. And like, you know, you might go look at your feed and at some point you gotta ask yourself, who is this person? You know, or just the, just the things that you, you know, say to people, you know, in your life, as you're, as you're, as you're just 
you know, growing and, and, and evolving just as a human. I'm obsessed with finding myself now after and, and, and not having to prove anything to anybody other than myself mm. and my family, you know, mm. but really myself mm. and realizing that that is enough. You know what I'm saying? Like that, like giving your best is enough. Mm -hmm. and, and sometimes we lose track of that, you know? And so for anybody out there, you know, you're enough, man. And now here's my last question. My very last question on the questions to ponder is why not now? There never was a better time. Take this dream and not let it die. Take this dream and give it life. Take this dream and breathe into it your own personal spirit until finally it becomes a flame that burns around the whole world. Let's go do it now. Just be the best version of yourself in anything that you do. You don't have to live anybody else's story. Um, sometimes people make it seem like you have to have certain prerequisites or, or a crazy life story in order to be successful in this world. Um, but the truth is, you, you really don't. It doesn't matter where you come from, what you have or don't have, what you lack, what you have too much of. But all you need to have is, is faith in God, an undying passion for what you do or what you choose to do in this life and a relentless drive and the will to do whatever it takes to be successful.